clear and accurate communication is critical in all of the life sciences and healthcare fields. One of the challenges of learning anatomy is that it's a science of words, and the experience is very similar to learning a foreign language. In fact, many of the anatomical and physiological terms have their roots in Greek and Latin. There are thousands of unique terms used in this field of study, all of them having specific and precise meanings, and it's important to become familiar with them. It can feel overwhelming at first, but the more you practice these terms, the more familiar they will become and the more comfortable you'll be using them. When describing any part of the body, it's assumed that the body is in a standard reference position called the anatomical position. In the anatomical position, the subject is always standing upright and facing the observer, head level and eyes facing forward. Both feet are flat on the floor and oriented forward. Both arms are placed at the sides with the palms facing forward. There are two terms used to describe a body in a reclining position, prone and supine. A body in the prone position is lying face down. Think of the phrase, lying prone on your breastbone to help you remember this position. A body in the supine position is lying face up. You can remember this position by the phrase, lying supine on your spine. The regional names of the body are a major part of the working language of anatomy. We will be using them constantly throughout the course. Regional names are used to describe specific body regions. The primary regions are the head, the neck, the trunk, the upper limbs, and the lower limbs. In each of these regions, there are specific body structures that are described using the technical anatomical names and the corresponding common names. It's important to learn both for ease of communication with medical staff and patients. Let's review the regional names for both the front and back of the body. The front of the body is referred to as the anterior or ventral body. The back of the body is called the posterior or dorsal body. The cephalic region, or head, consists of the cranial, or skull, and facial, or face regions. The regional terms of the anterior head include the frontal, or forehead, the temporal, or temple, the orbital, or ocular, which is the eye, the otic, which is the ear, the buckle, the cheeks, nasal, is the nose, oral, mouth, and mental, for the chin. The posterior head features the occipital region, which is the base of the skull. The cervical, or neck, supports the head and attaches it to the trunk. The trunk consists of three regions, the thoracic, or chest, the abdominal, which is the abdomen, and the pelvic, the pelvis. The regional names of the anterior trunk include the sternal, named after the sternum, or breastbone, the mammary, which is the breast, the umbilical, the navel, or belly button, coxal, which is the hip, inguinal, which is the groin, where the trunk attaches to the thighs, and pubic, or pubis, 
which is the anterior pelvis. One can view on the posterior trunk the vertebral, which is the spinal column, the lumbar, which is the loin, or the lower back, the sacral, which is named after the sacrum, the bone between the hips, coccygeal, named after the coccyx, or tailbone, and the perineal, which is the region between the anus and the genitals. One can view on the anterior arm the following regions. The acromial, or deltoid, which is the shoulder, the axillary, or armpit, the brachial, or upper arm, the antecubital, which is the front of the elbow, and the antebrachial, or the forearm, the carpal, which is the wrist. Remember that carpenters use their hands to remember that the carpals are close to the hands. The hand itself is manual. Think of manual labor or working with your hands. Palmer is the palm. Digital or phalangeal are the digits or fingers. And pollux is the thumb. One can view on the posterior arm the scapular, which is the shoulder blade, or scapula, the olecranol or cubital, which is the back of the elbow, and the dorsum, which is the back of the hand. Remember that dorsal refers to the back. The lower limbs, or legs, also attach to the trunk. One can view on the anterior leg the following regions. The femoral, named after the femur, or thigh bone. The patellar, that's the knee, named after the patella, or kneecap. Crural, which is the lower leg. The foot is pedal, think pedal, like when you pedal a bicycle with your feet. Tarsal is the ankle. Remember that the tarsals are closer to your toes. The dorsum is the top of the foot. Digital or phalangeal, that's the digits or the toes, the same terms that we use to describe the fingers. And hallux is the great toe. On the posterior leg, one can view the gluteal, or buttock, the popliteal, which is the hollow area at the back of the knee, sural is the calf, calcaneal, the heel, and plantar is the sole of the foot. When you plant your feet firmly on the ground, you are making direct contact with the soles of your feet to the ground.